This is an unofficial video supporting Maxime Bernier and the People's Party of Canada. Hello my fellow Canadians, thank you for taking the time to view this series of videos in order to gain understanding and better information so you may best cast your ballot this October for the sake of Canada today and onwards into the future. Additional resources such as more videos, policy comparison charts, business cards to direct voters to those resources, conversation starting t-shirts, links to key PPC Maxime Bernier social media accounts, as well as non-controlled news outlets, and other critical social media accounts can be found at canadiansforppc.blogspot.com. I'm just, uh, my mind is boggled. <laughs> it, it really is. And it's boggled because... I mean, I get the fear, right? And I'm going to talk about this vote split again. Because it's, it's important. The Conservatives are no longer Conservative. Are you even a member? Populism has arrived in Canada. Populists elect new parties, better and bigger than the Reform Party. Vote your convictions. Do not be afraid. Don't be lazy. We will win if everyone knows the message. We must be all in. There is enough time. Sheer is Trudeau. The Conservatives are no longer Conservative. The Conservatives have shifted so far left in an attempt to steal votes from the left that they've abandoned the right and are actually splitting up the left vote. Just watch this video by PPC MP candidate Laura Lynn Thompson. Any thinking, conscientious parent in Canada should be concerned, as should any grandparent, uncle, aunt, or person hoping to one day have children. Whether you agree with transgenderism or not isn't the debate. The debate is, shouldn't parents have the right to parent as they see fit? Or should the government and courts be allowed to take away those rights? We'll be talking about this more in video 18. PPC MP candidate David Haskell of Cambridge, writing, responds very well to this tweet. Here's the truth. Supporting the Conservatives doesn't solve the dilemma of Canada's leadership deficit. It just creates another one. Tyler, there's no dilemma here. Why would you try to rally everyone to vote out Trudeau just to replace him with someone who is the same when you can abandon that party like we are and vote in a new party with a leader that actually has the solutions you want? Really, our collective aim should be to replace both Trudeau and Scheer. If people really understood that focusing on Trudeau to ensure Andrew Scheer and the CPC party gets in doesn't change anything. Pause and look at the comparison list crafted by PPC MP candidate Cody Payant in Saskatchewan riding Carlton Trail Eagle Creek. It shows what the PPC will do versus the CPC. Scheer's positions are just like the Liberals. The PPC are the only ones radically different, and people that get informed see that. For people to say you're splitting a vote between, I guess in this case it's Conservative versus PPC, totally wrong. Uh, Max, Maxime Bernier has shown himself to be completely distinct from the Conservative Party's Andrew Scheer. Completely distinct. There's no, there's no comparison. Uh, if there is any comparison or degrees of separation, it's between uh, Andrew Scheer and Justin Trudeau. They yeah. share more policies than the Conservatives and the PPC do. Uh, that's an absolute fact. October 24, 2018, Bernier pointed out that Andrew Scheer whipped his party to vote for the Paris Accord. Only one brave soul stood against him. If we're going to reduce our emissions 30% from 2005 levels by 2030, what do you think that will do to our oil industry? Or the building of a promised pipeline? That's just over 10 years away. What about carbon tax and carbon pricing? The plan which I have here, the real plan to protect the environment, would meet your commitment and your party's commitment to the Paris Climate Accord emissions reductions. Will it meet the targets? This plan gives Canada the best shot at making those targets. The key to your plan is a cap on big emitters, right? Mm -hmm. 
Essentially though, Mr. Shear, that's a price on carbon. How does it work? If, if a big emitter exceeds whatever the cap is, they've got to pay some kind of fee. Like you're dancing around no, no, no. saying that there's a price on I, carbon. No, I, I reject so, that. So, so is it a price? Is it a tax? Is it a levy? Because because it sounds like a cap and trade. Yes, the of course. federal government sets the emitters target. Uh, of course. And then ha who sets the price on what they pay every time again, they exceed it? Again, we will. We will set that. We will set that that cap. We will. But that's uh, a price on carbon. Funds. But the Conservatives will employ a backdoor carbon tax on Canadians by taxing quote big emitters end quote who will pass the costs onto consumers via increased product pricing. Andrew Scheer also silenced his own MP, Michael Cooper, for stating the truth about the New Zealand shooter's affinity to communist China in an attempt to preserve the right for conservative commentators to engage in free and necessary speech online to educate us. And as you learn in video one, their party strategists rejected a longtime conservative nomination from an outspoken doctor and professor of political science because of his vocal criticism of radical Islamism, who himself is a Muslim. They're also pursuing a seat on the United Nations Security Council, just like Trudeau. November 3rd, 2018, the Toronto Sun reported Andrew Scheer saying, we have an opportunity to say that we are a pragmatic centrist party with room for lots of different views on lots of different issues. November 18th, 2018, well-known conservative commentator Ben Shapiro had former Prime Minister Stephen Harper on for an interview. As if in response to Scheer, Harper would say the following. Well, that's a, that's a great question because often you'll see the same thing happen in Canada. I'm a pragmatist or I'm a centrist. And of course, coming from a mouth of a conservative, it often means actually they're left of center, but somehow want to be in a conservative party. Now the liberals are the new left. The conservatives are moving to the center. And the People's Party of Canada, we are the only right. Yeah. Bernier's response is always the same to this centrist pragmatic stance. Translation, I don't have an, any ideas. I don't have any vision. I will tell you what you want to hear. They have to do focus groups and polling to know what they believe in. And after that, when they know what they believe in, they have to do focus groups to know what word to use to sell to you and please you. First of all, Andrew Shea and the Liberals on a lot of uh, subjects are the same. Andrew won't balance a budget in two years, he will do that in uh, five years. You've got Andrew Shear saying, I don't know, in my first term it'll take me a good few years to balance things. I'll still have to run some pretty sizable deficits as well. I mean, what gives? Uh, he won't cut corporate welfare, he won't speak about the equalization, he won't tell you that he's ready to use the constitution and to impose pipeline. So he's not the solution for the frustration of uh, Albertans and also other Canadians. You should know that the Toronto Star is no right-wing conservative stronghold. Although admittedly I don't know the article's author, Thomas Walcombe's political views, but perhaps he himself is right-leaning. It's worth reading the same from Cameron's Canadian Cachet, a Facebook page with excellent commentary on our politics is provided. Link in the description below. A post-millennial article written by Barbara Kay reads, As to the question of vote splitting, Haskell told me, If you're a Canadian with conservative leanings, this next federal election can't just be about getting Justin Trudeau out. It has to be about getting a conservative government in. And the CPC is no longer conservative, outside of their name. On running a deficit, keeping immigration numbers high, giving government handouts, even censoring conservative opinions, Andrew Scheer is the same as the Liberals. There's only one conservative party in Canada today, and that's the PPC under Maxime Bernier. We're not splitting the conservatives' vote, we're gathering it, because people can see we're the real deal. That is a harsh assessment of Scheer and his party, and I wish I could say that it is too harsh, but I am afraid I cannot. Many Canadian Conservatives have been extremely patient with Scheer, hoping for a platform reveal that would reflect even some of their freedom-related concerns. That has not happened. You can actually listen to the, his excellent thoughts on vote splitting here. He says we're gathering the vote, no doubt, from the majority of Canadians tired of the back-and-forth cycle. It's no wonder then that an insider was able to share that the CPC are so afraid of the PPC being heard that they try their best not to even mention them. Hence, Scheer pretending not to know his main rival of only a year ago while in Calgary. Who's Bernier, Scheer asks. He knows exactly who Bernier is, and he doesn't want the average conservative or even liberal voter knowing who he is because his, his accolades are at least five times as impressive as his own, just as Preston Manning, founder and leader of the Reform Party, reveals. 
So Maxime Bernier was first elected to the House of Commons in 2006 with the largest majority of any candidate outside Alberta. He was appointed to cabinet on February 6, 2006 as uh, Minister of Industry and subsequently became Minister of Foreign Affairs and Minister of State for Small Business and Tourism. Prior to becoming a member of parliament, he was vice president of the Standard Life of Canada insurance company and uh, uh, a manager of, a corporate, of corporate and international affairs at the Commission de Valeur Mobilier du Québec. So Maxime, will you please come up and we're looking forward to what you have. We'll talk in video four about just how outmatched Scheer and Trudeau are against Max. Here's an image depicting what Canadians habitually do. Voting out a party to accept an equally crooked party is a terrible idea. Einstein apparently wants to define insanity as doing the same thing over and over again expecting different results. We have to stop doing this to ourselves. Bernier left the Conservative Party in August of 2018 saying they were too corrupt to be reformed and many people agreed to some extent. 22% agreeing wholeheartedly. This party can't be fixed. Everyone should be abandoning it. Are you even a member? Are you even a diehard CPC supporter and member? I doubt it. Look, they only have 259,000 members. The number of eligible voters in Canada during the 2015 election was 25,638,379. Do the math and that's less than 1% of the voting population of Canada. In September of last year, when Bernier began, a whopping 17% of Canadians were open to supporting the party. Then the establishment went to work suppressing and attacking him via the media and any outlet they could in hopes that they would not take away their power base. Here's a brief clip from immediately after the 2018 CPC conference in Halifax. Bernier had quit the party just before. They don't want to discuss the real fight. They don't want to discuss what Canadians and Conservatives want us to discuss. Now they're throwing mud at me and, you know, they're desperate. And usually it's a, it's a behavior that is coming from a loser. What you saw yesterday is just uh, the most public example of many other uh, not so public examples of a party that is broken. Stephen Fletcher is now an MP candidate for the PPC in Manitoba's Charleswood, St. James, Assiniboia, Headingley riding. Populism has arrived in Canada. This National Post article by John Robson explains, rather than rally against the elites and populism, Scheer goes soft. Scheer won't balance the budget he claimed he could do, and the Liberals realize they can't pin him in a negative comparison to Doug Ford of Ontario now because he's not even that conservative. People in Western countries are evidencing through their elections that they want to buck the old systems and populist movements such as Nigel Farage's Brexit Party win in UK and Australia. So to avoid comparison to Trump and Ford, Scheer goes farther left. He can't reinvigorate the military or do away with supply management, which again points back to his sleazy workings with the dairy cartel to win the leadership race in 2017. And we'll discuss this in greater detail in a later video. Meaning, these are just the types of principles that make a weak leader, without a doubt. The newly elected Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, Boris Johnson, has mentioned, well before his recent campaign victory, pointing to the dissatisfaction of the people for not getting them out of the EU as they wished. Finally, Robson refers to Maxime Bernie as the only name and party to look for, for a populist response. And that's why the establishment system is against Bernie and the PPC, because it's a populist movement to some extent. Listen to this snippet from a video by Dr. Turley. And of course, you have the rogue MP Maxime Bernier recently left the Conservative Party to create his own nationalist populist party known as the People's Party of Canada. So needless to say, left-wing globalists in Canada, they're beginning to panic. And it got even worse when they were informed of the results from a study that was conducted by the ECOS Research that interviewed more than 12,000 Canadians and found that Canada was thoroughly fertile ground for a mass populist movement to take hold. In fact, the study found that less than half of those Canadians sampled actually bought into the whole globalist mindset, that open borders are a good thing, that free trade benefits everyone, that all cultures are equally valuable and valid and meaningful, that all lifestyle values should be celebrated and tolerated and the like. 
less than half the Canadian population actually believes and supports this Trudeauian globalist vision. And so this study concluded that we had better be ready for Canada to begin to turn to the nationalist populist right. Indeed, this was corroborated by a 2017 study that found that 80% of Canadians surveyed think elites who run institutions are out of touch with regular people. Less than half, 49% said that they actually trust institutions like government, media, and businesses. So now, as we speak, With a politically crippled, fledgling Justin Trudeau, are we in fact seeing the rise of a new Canadian nationalist populist right that's ready to once and for all topple the last and final champion for globalization on the world stage? Tune in on a regular basis to find out. He's also got a brief video on populism in Europe as well as another worth watching regarding the populist wave of the future. This begs the question, If populism is the common people bucking off the heavy-handed control of the elites through the upper political class, and it's not the conservatives who are the populists, then who is Scheer, or the executive branch of the CPC, or even the funders and handlers behind the executive branch of the CPC who are calling the shots? Well, friend, they're the very elite we, the over 50% of the Canadian populace ripe for a populist movement, are trying to get rid of. Now notice what MP candidate of the PPC for Lambton, Kent Middlesex, Bria Atkins says. The People's Party of Canada offers Canadians a distinct choice, uh, whereas the established parties uh, really offer much of the same. So I'm very happy to be a part of this. I believe in my heart that at least 50% of Canadians align with our freedom ideas, freedom of speech most importantly, but also individual freedom, less government, more individual responsibility. The strategic maneuver by the elite was to confound populism with fascism just as they confounded Islam with Islamism as seen in video one. On one hand, you can't speak out against Islamism because you will be seen as an Islamophobe. On the other hand, you're driven to be afraid to join a populist movement because you'll be seen as a fascist and racist. They also move fascism to the other side of the spectrum, the right wing. When truly, tyranny and government control is on one end of the spectrum alongside communism, Marxism, and very closely to socialism, while libertarianism is on the other. So fascism has no right being placed anywhere near the right. You may have received the same indoctrination as I did while attending high school in the 90s. This was no accident on their part. This was to repel you from adopting a desire for more personal freedom and smaller government, quelling populist upheavals against the system, before they can even begin. But people want it whether they know it or not. We're rapidly voting in conservative parties because we are seeing something broken with Canada and see the NDP and Liberals are taking us in that direction and think the conservative parties are the solution. But the conservative by name only parties truly won't do enough either. And these conservative parties were as close as we could get. Until now. Populists elect new parties. In this email campaign to the debate committee, which I partook in, the original author was right in pointing out that Criteria 3 has no bearing in determining Maxime Bernier's involvement in the debates when all over the world we're seeing new parties win elections. Of course, the Liberal Debate Committee knows this, which is really why Bernier's being shut out, and you can see that in Video 3. Look what happened in Quebec. They elected the La Coalition Avenir Quebec. That's a new party. So I think, yes, they're ready for a change, and they want somebody that is authentic. You know, I'm saying the same thing for the last 10 years. Our platform is very clear, coherent, and people appreciate that. Better and bigger than the Reform Party. I've heard people say they tried this and failed with the Reform Party in the 90s. But this just isn't the same. They'd begun as a populist movement in the 1988 election, but only ran 72 candidates, none of whom won a riding. Too bad that Preston Manning was not speaking French. He was not able to have support in Quebec. One of our colleagues, uh, Kevin O'Leary, said in in an interview a couple of weeks ago that he didn't need to learn French to become prime minister of our country. Well, Kevin, when you go to restaurant and tourist places in Quebec City, Of course, people will answer you in English, as they do in Amsterdam, Vienna, and Rome. They want your business. (laughs) 
it, it doesn't mean that you can govern Italy without speaking Italian. <laughs> I can tell you, when I visit every region of our great country, I won't be a tourist. I won't be a tourist. I want to be a unifying candidate. For one, Bernier was loved by people across the country, according to voting maps. Before creating the People's Party of Canada, you know, I have to look at the political party and what, is the, what was their platform. And I looked to a very old party and a kind of a platform in a book called the Blue Book. Do you remember the Blue Book? Yeah. The Reform Party? Yeah, the blue book. So I've read the blue book. I said, my God, it's all that I believe in. You know, limited government, no more corporate welfare. That was part of the blue book at that time. Well, I would say that probably about 80 to 85% of our platform is from the Reform Party day. The People's Party of Canada has, in a very short time, created a nationwide movement and built the scaffolding around which the future of Canada can be constructed. It's pretty amazing that we went from zero EDAs to 338 in 90 days. We have the second most candidates of any party. Uh, Conservatives have a few more than us, but we're well on our way to getting 338 candidates. and. We're going to try and do exactly what the Brexit party just did in Britain. Uh, we're a six-week-old party, came out of the box swinging, and, and they won right away. And uh, I think with our platform, as strong as it is, and the leadership of Max Bernier, uh, we can do the same thing here in Canada. Last I heard, as of September 6th, 330. And when I'm traveling, we're not in a electric a electoral campaign right now, but I'm doing rallies all across the country and we are able to have 300 people, 250 people that are coming to listen to politicians speaking about what needs to be done in this country. And he's had rallies with even more than that, especially the recent Toronto Immigration Policy Reveal rally, as well as his own rally in Beauce, Quebec. Bernier says it's better because it's pan-Canadian, meaning it includes all of Canada, because this time it's not just the West. Plus, we have social media and the internet to get our message out. So that's why I think we, we have a kind of a momentum. People like the way that we're doing politics. I'm not looking at the poll and, oh, that idea, is it popular or not? I will speak about it. No, my goal is to speak about what I believe. We have the right ideas. We, based on freedom and personal responsibility, speak about it. The more I will speak, the more support I will have. If there's only 10% of the population that wanted to change the equalization formula, it's okay, I will speak about it, I will explain that to Canadians. But the other politician, they don't want to speak about it until there's 50% of the population. My role as a politician to speak about what I believe and, and explaining our policies, and the more I will speak about it, the, the, I hope the most support I will have. Vote your convictions. The only party that says we'll impose pipelines in BC and Quebec, the only party that says we're going to reform equalization to make it fair for the provinces. We're the only party that's against corporate welfare and against crony capitalism. There's nothing to split. We stand alone on all of these issues, including the most important, which is the UN. We stand alone. There's nothing to split anymore. The Conservatives are the establishment, as the Liberals are, as the NDP is as the Greens are. If you support the Conservative Party, you are supporting the establishment, you are supporting globalism, you're supporting the UN agenda, you're supporting the Paris Accord, you're supporting a carbon tax, whether they call it one or not, because it's going to cost Canadians a load of money just under Scheer's plan. Scheer's plan meets more of the UNSDA targets than the Liberals does. And most Canadians, if they understood this, if they understood it, for what it is, I guarantee you the PPC would win the next election in a landslide. The People's Party allows you to show integrity and follow your values. Here's how a moral philosopher would explain the problem and the solution. If you're presented with two choices 
and both fall short of your values, it's morally permissible to choose the lesser of the two evils. Scheer's conservatives over Trudeau's liberals would be the lesser of two evils. But what if there is an unequivocal good choice put into the mix, as seen with the People's Party? Well, if you're presented with three choices and the first two, to a greater or lesser degree, compromise your values, while the third aligns with them, then the third choice is the clear ethical choice. Because only the third choice saves you from hypocrisy and preserves your integrity. Making the right choice even when it's difficult keeps your character and integrity strong and by extension the country also. MP PPC candidate Jeff Benoit of Chattagway Lacole writing tweets out, People say we are splitting the vote. We say we're creating it. Creating it with values. Creating it for freedom. Creating it by necessity. How you ask? By standing up with conviction and promoting unity for all Canadians. That's how we're creating it. He's right. I'm not in that game. I don't play that game. If you like what I'm saying, come with us and support us and vote for, for a change. Vote for what you, you, you believe in and don't vote against something. That's what I'm asking Canadians. Vote for what you believe. Vote for something, not against something. Do not be afraid. We talk in video 26 about the irrationality of fear and the need to be courageous when something like Canada's future is on the line. But we can do away with this fear right now by understanding why fear four more years of Trudeau when four years of the Conservatives under Scheer won't actually be any better? A lot of the country want to see Justin Trudeau gone. He's a national embarrassment and a very dangerous man to the, to the security of this nation. However, putting somebody in who mirrors his policies, you're just going to get Justin Trudeau in again, but in the guise of Andrew Scheer. It's, it's Andrew Scheer is yeah. Justin Trudeau light but still Justin Trudeau. He's the Liberal Party light, but still the Liberal Party. Who cares about that? You either go for the gold, and in this case it's Maxime Bernier's PPC, or stay home, because Andrew Scheer is no alternative to the Liberal Party and Justin Trudeau. Don't be lazy. Is it laziness? Is it wanting to do what's expedient and comfortable? Not wanting to do the hard work of door knocking and getting the message out? I've heard not a single good argument against the PPC. I've come across a couple oddball conspiracy theories that are no doubt false, but even if they were true, they pale in comparison to the now known reality that both conservative and liberals are in bed with the Muslim Brotherhood and linked to Qatar. Folks are saying that Sheer is going to govern in a certain way once he obtains power. I had a guy uh, actually indicate to me, he said, I went into uh, a meeting with somebody who supports Shear and somebody who had hosted Shear, and that guy says that when Shear gets in power, he's going to do great things on guns. He's going to oppose the transgender activism, even though the, the, the party has supported all this transgender nonsense, and you've got, you've got uh, Michelle Rempel partying with Morgan Ogre, uh, never speaking out, never defending kids, never talking about Soji, never doing anything like this, kicking people out of the party who want to talk about these issues, yet we're supposed to believe that once they're in power, all of a sudden they'll, they'll stand up for what's right in Canada. Folks, they won't do it. We will win if everyone knows the message. So rather than do what's easy, everyone should be sharing the platform of the People's Party of Canada, waking up others to know them, how the mainstream parties will fail them and their corruption, primarily through door knocking, but also by personal phone calls to friends, direct Facebook messages to acquaintances, and even social media posting and sharing. If we look at this CBC poll from August 15th, we get this pie chart. Not that we should invest any trust in these polls because they are always manipulated anymore. We'll be discussing that in the next video on media bias and poll tailoring. Understand that people from every party appreciate what the PPC stands for and have joined its ranks, tired of the same old, same old from the other parties. Part of that story is why I, I sort of backed out of politics because I just, it was just politics as usual it's politics as usual over and over again and like a lot of people i just backed out of politics i backed out of trusting politicians i backed out of you know them saying one thing and doing another and then all of a sudden now here's a party where i look at all of the platform items and i just check every box on the way down and if i can do that being a, a conservative supporter i can't say member because i was never a member of the cpc uh, but if I can do that, being a conservative voter, 
uh, for as long as I've been alive, then so can everybody else. They just have mm-hmm. to they have to pull themselves away from this blind loyalty and 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 critically think about what's on the table and what the history is. I was a member of the Conservative Party and I was following the leadership race and I wanted Maxim Bernie to win. And he lost by a small margin. And what really got me is when I saw Andrew Shear drink out of the carton of milk and basically thank the dairy cartel for helping him win. So Max did his speech and addressed the folks and had some Q&A and some you know, discussion back and forth. And then one fella put up his hand for a question and says, how do I go about re- renouncing my member and joining the BBC? And mm-hmm. we're like, yay, you know. And then there's some other fella sitting a couple of spots down from him. Before we started, I asked, are we all PPC members here? And he said, no, I'm a CPC. And there's a couple other hands went up. Yeah. And so after after we were done, I asked him again, so what's the verdict? He said, where do I sign up? Nice. So that was cool. But the That's best awesome. one was the, was the fellow sitting next to me who was a campaign manager for Randy Hoback, longtime conservative MP out of Prince Albert. Mm-hmm. He was a campaign manager for Randy. And he said, I want a picture with Max. And with Kelly, who's the yeah. candidate for PA, Kelly Day, yeah. I want a picture with her and Max with the PPC flag. And as soon as I get that picture, I'm going to forward it to all of my people in the Conservative Party, including the the Member of Parliament, and tell them I've defected to the PPC. Wow. So, that is so I cool. Mean, it is, right? Yeah. And, and that's the power that we have. And the reason we have that power is because we have a platform that's going to do what people want a political party and a, and a government. To mm-hmm. So, and they hear it and they believe it. And when they meet Max, they see it in him. They believe it. It's completely ridiculous when you hear uh, certain members of the Conservative Party say that we're splitting the vote when in reality, uh, you know, they abandoned their base. They're a top down party that's conservative in name only. And uh, we're not. We're, we're a true grassroots option. The other day while door knocking, I was approaching a fellow on his driveway and he said, don't even bother, I'm for the PC. You know they're hardcore when they say PC, a reference to the old now defunct progressive conservative party that melded with, and frankly corrupted, the reform party. But I asked him what his prime concern was and how he thought the conservatives would solve it. He said pipelines. I asked if he'd heard of the proposed energy corridor. He had. I informed him of how it will fall through because provinces invited to partake for the sake of getting Alberta oil through in a pipeline won't when they don't benefit. Example, Ontario currently have no interest in purchasing hydroelectricity from Quebec, the very province stonewalling the pipeline going east. Then we talked about the Paris Accord and Shear's proclamation they'd meet the criteria before the Liberals ever could. Then the carbon pricing being a trickle-down form of the carbon tax. Then the UN Security Council seat by Shear. Just as Trudeau wants. In six to seven minutes, this fellow was saying, okay, let me have one of those pamphlets. I'm going to look into this. His party had sold him out, and someone had finally taken the time to show him. Real liberals, of the classical sense, love individual freedom and freedom of speech. And even some modern liberals of this hijacked definition are furious with their leader's mismanagement of funds, the deficit, and the unbalanced budget thanks to abandonment of sensible budgeting and fiscal responsibility for the furthering of socialism. So they're leaving to join the party as well. One other reason is the PPC stance on individual freedom that the current ultra-progressive Liberal Party has forgotten. Former Liberals, people who voted for Jacques Chrétien and Paul Martin for a balanced budget and lower taxes, people who voted for Justin Trudeau when he said he would balance the budget. So they're... They're not there anymore. They don't see themselves in this socialist liberal party anymore. So they're coming with us. We're the only one who will balance the budget in two years. So yes, we can have these people with us. And that's great. That's why we are going. And the more we speak about our platform, the more support we'll have. As I said before, I was a Trudeau voter. Never again. But my goodness, there are a lot of us. There are a lot of people who voted for Trudeau and who never would again. I considered conservative, but you know what? Andrew Scheer is not willing to do what's necessary to stop what Trudeau started. So I've, I've recognized that. I recognize that right away. And I think most Canadians are, are, are intelligent enough to look at that. I talked to my mom today, who's, yeah. who's, who actually voted for Trudeau. 
and you know she gets her information from CBC. Mm-hmm. She she's a she's a liberal for a reason, or voted liberal for a reason. She's voted NDP provincially. You know she's she's a, a an old school NDP here. So she likes the idea of socialism, right? And and that's so. But it's funny because she came to the rally of the day with Max, and she, you know, was there. She was clapping. So I asked her today about two right hours on, ago. I right called on. her. I said, "So what did you think?" I loved it. I loved. I loved the energy. I loved the people that were there. And it's so. And it's in her words. It's so different to actually meet the man than what you hear about on in the media. Mm-hmm. Like he's very kind, he's very warm and he's very, you know, all these other things that, that yeah. you know, moms, yeah. tend, moms tend to look for. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. <laughs> and she, she's completely sold. In the 2015 election in Canada, I voted for the first time and I voted liberal. Uh, a lot of traditional liberals uh, that remember what it was like 20 or 30 years ago and they compare that to the the crazy policies of Justin Trudeau they're looking for an option as events in my country are ramping up and we're moving to this election year and things are getting really interesting really exciting and what's been happening is really scary and I had no idea the extent that the damage was being done to my country We survived two world wars as a nation, and I believe that if we have to go through another four years of Trudeau's government, we will survive that too. But I don't want to. And I have a lot of hope that Maxime Bernier's new party, the People's Party of Canada, is going to sweep this nation in a true blue wave. I think that's something worth getting behind, big time. Surprising to me is that your message and your platform is actually drawing former NDP voters. We had the president of a Liberal Party EDA come to one of our meetings and say he wanted to get involved. Yeah. Are you seeing that across the country? Oh yeah, that's a good question. Who is our membership and our people? Right. Is it only former conservative? No. I can tell you that I'm doing rally across the country, and after that, I'm taking photo and I'm asking, what are you doing? Yeah. What the, and 30, at least 30, 30, 35 percent of our people are people who didn't vote at the last federal election. The participation rate at the last election was 70 percent. So 30 percent of the population did not vote at the last federal election. And a lot of them, because they don't believe in politicians anymore, they are coming with us because they have the authenticity of our campaign. And so that's great. And that's great because during the election, if we have only half of that 30 percent, then it will vote for us. It, it's, we're starting by 50 percent. So. This viewer on Critical Thinker's live stream with MP PPC candidate Mark Friesen admits he was a non-voter for years, likely thanks to the corruption. But he's ready. What about the rest of non-voters? MP candidate Kelly Lawrence, who will be taking LibCon Michelle Rempel's place in Calgary Nose Hill, said, It's interesting because uh, last night we were out door knocking again and um, my team had come up to this house and they, uh, the individuals that live there hadn't voted in 50 years. So basically they've never voted because they didn't like um, the way politics was going. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, I was told that as my team was walking up to the door, they had their PPC t-shirts on and the hats on and this lady started laughing at them as they came up to the door. And by the time they left, uh, probably about half an hour, 45 minutes later, uh, this this lady was all on board 100%. And then my team came up and told me, and we walked up to the house. They took me to the house, and then all of a sudden, here I am, walking up to the house, the candidate. Uh, she was thrilled. And we're going to get together with them. And, you know, that's happening more and more every day. I know that's true because this is the experience of our local volunteer team, door knocking. 80% of people our door knockers talk to in hard blue ridings are saying they would rather support the sensible PPC and are excited to come aboard the movement. Because we're speaking in a principled way, a lot of people are coming off the sidelines. A lot of people that had given up on politics have decided to throw in their lot with the PPC. Uh, There are very strong volunteers that are coming from that direction. And we're also pulling in 
uh, you know, some of the NDP, traditional NDP vote that uh, just look at their current leadership and, and realize that they no longer represent the working people, that they've gone so far to the left that, uh, you know, they're almost off the political spectrum. Dan, what brought you into the People's Party of Canada and where did you come from politically? Um, growing up, I was NDP all the way. My dad was the mayor. My grandfather was an MPP for the NDP. And uh, But as I got older, I was more with the Conservatives. I think we can attract people that are, if you want to call it old school NDP, that didn't like the crony capitalism type stuff, that um, they can... I see them having a spot in the People's Party. Mm -hmm. uh, the NDP has moved a long ways from where they were 30, 40 years ago, I feel. And so I think there's a spot in the People's Party for people who don't want corporate welfare. But also the NDP, um, I'll give you an anecdote. When we started the party and the writing association in Newfoundland, there's one writing in Newfoundland when uh, our members were very, very mad at us and they were calling the office. Why? Because the executive of that writing association, people who were there were former NDP, but not only voter NDP, but they work uh, at, the, at the federal level to, be, to elect NDP for the last four elections. So our membership called, how come the for PPC now is the NDP and blah, 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 and that thing, you can't tolerate that. So I did a conference call with them, and I called them, and I said, uh, people are telling me that you voted NDP and you worked for the NDP the last four years. Is it true? He said, yes, it is. Um, I said, guys, did you read our platform? He said, yes, we did. So what are you doing in my party? And they said, because Maxim have two files and two policies that are very important for us, and we believe that you'll do it. Ending corporate welfare. We don't believe in that. And in the NDP, we, didn't, we, we don't speak about that. Why? Because they have the union vote, and uh, a lot of them are working with a big corporation like GM, and GM receives a lot of subsidies, so they are not against subsidies. So and it's it's bad for the economy. And you're the only leader to speak about that. And, and you share some speaking about that. And the other policies is the cartel for the supply management, milk, dairy, and egg. It is a regressive tax on the poor. They are paying four hundred dollars more a year for that, and they're taxing the poor to give, and they're giving that to the rich producers. And you didn't want only one to speak about that, and you were here to help the poor, and your party is the only one who's going to do it. So, and I said, okay, you're welcome. Thank you very much. So we called all our members there, and we said, you know, they are with us. They believe in the ideas. I know some of the uh, NDP people that have come over to us. Uh, they saw that we're going to eliminate supply management, which is a regressive tax on the poor. We're going to increase the income tax exemption up to $15,000, which also helps uh, poor people. Flat tax on people earning between 15K and 100K, so that puts more money in their pocket. We'll eliminate corporate welfare. So all of those things are something that traditional NDP, they could probably buy in on those issues. And I'm convinced, and I think Kelly's convinced, and most of the candidates are convinced, that if you can expose as many people to our platform and to our core values and what we actually stand for, most people will agree with what we're putting forward. I've yet to have a debate with anybody that doesn't like what we're promoting unless they're really hardcore sort of NDP socialist type. And those are fairly few and far between in my writing. Many people who don't necessarily consider themselves conservative and who did not vote for us are fed up with a big government over borrowing and over spending. A big government trying to manage our lives from the cradle to the grave. And, and we can safely bet they will be even more fed up four years from now. It's gonna be either me or the local conservative. And if people want just more of the same, then they can vote in the conservative candidate. But if they want 
someone that's going to go to Ottawa and tip over the apple cart and really fight for the important issues, then that's what I'm going to try and do for them. I've, I've yet to come across anybody, any conservative supporter, uh, want to debate me on the platform because they can't. They simply can't. They know everybody knows our platform is about Canadians, is yeah. about our country, it's conservative values. Everybody knows that. They can't argue it. So it right. always falls back to where we started in this conversation, which is split the vote. Yeah. And at the end of the day, if everybody that said uh, they can't support the PPC because they're going to split the vote, if every yeah. one of those people simply dropped that, went a little deeper than the surface, and actually got in touch with their values and mm-hmm. compared it to the to the platform, we the PPC would win the election in a landslide. Now look what this looks like in a chart according to Abacus data. 52% of the PPC supporters left the Conservatives, 23% left the Liberals, 14% came from the NDP, and believe it or not, 5% came from the Green Party, and 4% came from Bois Québécois, 2% came from other. And the political spectrum in the bottom right corner reveals more than half of his support self-identifies as centrist, a little less on the left than on the right. Age demographics are nearly quarter each, from 18 to over 65. Men-women ratio is about 60-40. These are very good numbers. Now extrapolate those percentages and apply them to our current polls to represent all those voters knowing the platform of the People's Party of Canada, plus the 3.1% ready-to-vote PPC, and you get 30.7%. And having stolen just enough support from those other parties, the PPC wins, even against the Liberals who are left with only 25.8%. But if you add just half of the 32% of voters, representing disenfranchised voters who grew tired of corruption but get to hear the PPC platform, you arrive at 46.7%. A conservative commentator who happens to also be gay put out an unofficial poll, Based on his positions, he surely garners attention from conservatives across the spectrum. So if the median polls are correct that the PPC is a small fraction of the conservatives, why do you see more than half of them tell this guy to support Maxime Bernier? Unless the polls we're fed aren't true, and a large number of conservatives in Canada actually support the PPC, meaning polls around 3% should read closer to 15 to 20%. A number I myself would easily estimate would be the actual polling number in Canada if Max's name was actually an op- option in these surveys. More on that in the next video. What about this one from a newspaper in Prince Rupert, BC? Which, from the results, is not only read by hardcore populists of the North, but by the entire city, including Liberals. Look at the results. Andrew Scheer, when I was with him, when I was a conservative, um, he was not winning against Justin Trudeau. Mm-hmm. He was always six to eight points behind Justin Trudeau. And Maxime Bernier is not with Andrew Scheer right now. And uh, Andrew Scheer is not winning. He's behind, Andrew, uh, behind Justin Trudeau by four to six points now. So he is not able to win. So what I'm saying to people, vote for your values. Vote for what you believe in. Be part of the change. Be with us. We have the momentum right now. We have the real conservative policies and ideas and come with us. We must be all in. You know who's splitting the conservative vote? Sure supporters. Why would you water down our chance of escaping the system by hanging on to the fake conservative party? We can't make the mistake of not going all in. We don't want to have a new reform party and a conservative party like the progressive conservatives leading to us joining them together once again. That was the worst thing because it utterly tainted the reform party. But we don't have to do that because we have a pan-Canadian party. Merging the PPC with the CPC for the next election would be like a healthy person drinking poison. There is enough time. Mr. Returning Officer, thank you. Good evening, everybody. Never before in British politics has a new party launched just six weeks ago, topped the polls in a national election. The reason, of course, is very obvious. The Brexit party Nigel Farage formed and won only six weeks later because they stood for the what people wanted. 
the nationalist Brexit party led by outspoken Eurosceptic Nigel Farage came into existence last January. Four months later, it boasts 29 MEPs, members of the European Parliament. The Brexit party's success is a genuinely organic statement of anger directed at traditional parties by great swaths of citizens who not only felt disrespected and ignored, they actually were, by any objective standards, disrespected and ignored. It was needed. Are we really being listened to by either the CPC or the Liberals? What we see from the evidence in European countries where traditionalist, populist and nationalist parties have had a lot of success is that about 40% of their vote have come off the sidelines. People that were just disgusted with the political system and weren't participating, uh, all of a sudden they realized there was a new option and that got them excited. And I, I see this all the time when I'm talking to people and many of my volunteers are exactly people like that, that they, they're not conservatives. They, they just were people that were on the outside and hadn't even voted in 15, 20, 25 years. And now they're solidly backing the PPC. So just getting a good chunk of those, uh, those voters that are on the sidelines Let's share, educate, train, door knock, recruit, and replicate. Create the wave and win. See video 26 for how to do this. By this, we could all change the system through a revolt at the ballot box. If people back east uh, want to really build this country and keep things together, you should strongly consider supporting the People's Party of Canada mm -hmm. because we're probably the only party because we are going to treat everyone equally from coast to coast and we're yeah. going to take a lot of this uh, regional identity politics out of it. Um, we can maybe bring things back together and get it working again. Uh, otherwise, you're going to have a big problem on your hands a few years from now. I speculate that the executives within the CPC had decided what with the Liberal Party's many gaffes that voters would be desperate, and even Liberals would vote for the Conservatives if they came much farther left to court them and pander to them. But their greed has been their demise because they abandoned the base. This may be why a year ago we saw harder stances on issues by the Conservatives, and now silence and even submission. But if that's what they're willing to do to win, then they have zero convictions, and anything they said in the past was just for show as well. Sheer is Trudeau. Voting for Sheer to get Trudeau out is voting out bad with something just as bad in many of the same ways, but also in ways that are different. Please watch video one if you haven't yet. Listen to this brief exchange between Daniel Metz and Robert Vaughn from Just Right Media. And when is the time you're supposed to do this? When is the time you're supposed to yeah. break out? When is the time you're supposed to take a principled stand? If you've watched video one, you know Shear is as much of a puppet for the establishment and the globalist elite with no interest for Canadians as Trudeau or anyone else from the mainstream parties are. You will see the clear evidence for this through this video series. There is the PPC and there is the rest of the establishment parties. That's it. That's all there is. So I'm not splitting anything. The PPC isn't splitting anything. We're the only party that wants to regain our sovereignty, to maintain our sovereignty, to protect our sovereignty, to get pipelines. The only party that says we'll impose pipelines in BC and Quebec. Written two months ago, Barbara Kay says, one of Bernier's great strengths is that in spite of years of political experience, he has not become jaded or cynical. He wears his own heart on his sleeve, not a thespian, mantra-driven, lacrimose, pre-programmed, heart-of-the-kind Trudeau is so famous for, but an unsentimental heart full of deeply considered convictions that beat like ruggedly manned boats against the progressive current upon which Justin Trudeau is a dreamily bobbing twiglet. It's time to end the insanity. I can't even believe a party like this has come along to give us this kind of a choice. And man, I I'm so pumped. I want to tell you about what's been going on as I've been campaigning and fighting for the People's Party of Canada. I have these conversations with people and I think this leads me to believe that we're going to have a big surprise in October. I really, really do. Uh, because this is how 
uh, conversations start, you know, well, I'm CPC, I've always been CPC, and we're, we can't split the vote. And I say, absolutely, we don't want to split the vote, we don't want Trudeau in, but are you voting for the party that represents your values? Sir, what do you think about voting for your values? What do you think about voting for what you actually believe in instead of voting for what you don't believe in? What about that? Well, there, little missy, you've got a point. Maybe I will. Give me your brochure. Maybe I will vote for the PPC. Hmm. I think we're going to have some surprises. Please like, share, and subscribe, and hit the bell to be notified of future videos in this series. All sources used have links in the description below, and all compatible videos can also be found in a playlist within this channel. Link below. The complete list of videos in this series for the upcoming election can be found at canadiansforppc.blogspot.com. You can also follow Maxime Bernier on social media via these different platforms. Check out the official PPC website at peoplespartyofcanada.ca. If you want to support the party, you can volunteer with your local candidate and EDA or Electoral District Association and donate directly to them if able. Going door to door with this information and training other concerned Canadians to do likewise will be most beneficial as this is a genuine grassroots movement. And if you believe in the power of prayer, please do be praying for our leaders and our nation. Thank you and God bless Canada.